with Project RS125 taking up tons of time, I thought, you know what? We need to get Ducati 748 SP back out on the road. So it's been a little while since we've had the 748 SP out. I mean, wow, she just <laughs> still to this day, I think what a fantastic looking bike. Imagine riding around on this on the mid nineties, what a legend. But yeah, we've got um, some things to do. Uh, essentially the first job I did, which was off camera is the Termagoni stickers. They are now back to original Ducati ones. I had some pattern ones on there before. Every time I looked at them, they were upsetting me and it just got worse and worse. Like things like the tail tidier, I went back to original as well. So that's all been changed over. I've got an intermittent issue with a random misfire, which I think is wiring. So essentially when the bike starts, runs fine, you leave it idling, it sounds like it drops a cylinder, but there's no pop or bang as if it's an overfueling. It sounds like there's actually a fuel, inje ugh, a fuel injection issue, maybe on a plug or something. So we'll have a quick look at the wiring. I've got a cloudy headlight. We'll get the fairings off, have a quick look over the bike. And um, yeah, let's get it out for MOT. And then, uh, yeah, go for a little ride about, see if it's still as good as I remember. It's been a couple of years since I've been out on it properly. So um, wish me luck. Let's hope we can find these problems. As mentioned, we've got to do some bits to the 748 SP and I'm going to need to get it on the ramp because once you've had a taste of ramp life, there is no going back to working around on the floor. The problem is I need to move the R1 out of the way and the trusty Jigsaw is also sort of blocking the access, which means I need to move the bike from the right hand side. And for those of you that have done this, you'll understand when I say it feels like you're writing with the opposite side of your hand. It just doesn't feel right not being on that side stand. But I move it out the way, get her on the bench, and we can begin working on the old girl in comfort. The Ducati 748 is a wonderful bike to work on. Really well thought out and it's all bodywork is held on with Zeus fasteners. And essentially these are just a quick release item. Two in the bottom, a couple on either side and essentially you've got all the fairings off to access everything you need. Well done Ducati, wonderful product. Now, thankfully, we live in a day and age where you can find pretty much everything on the internet. And when I was Googling the symptoms of the poor 748's little hiccup misfire on idle, there were some suggestions pointing to the crank position sensor. And this, thankfully, is pretty easy to take apart and examine. And essentially what I read up was, if you're unfortunate enough that you end up getting some swarf in the engine, which uh, is never a good thing, it can contact the end of the crank position sensor because essentially it's got a magnet in it and this can cause interference. So I removed it, pleased to see that there was no swarf on the end of the magnet, but uh, I don't know, we cleaned it up, put it back in and, we're just going to have to keep fault finding. So with the crank position sensor back in place, the next thing I wanted to check were the plugs on the bike. This included the ECU, the relays under the seat. It was difficult to access the injector plugs, but essentially I gave everything a thorough check, pulled it out, no corrosion on any of the pins or contacts. Everything looked pretty good. So. I thought, you know what, it's been a couple of months since we started the 748. The last two times I've started it, this misfire's occurred pretty much straight away. <sighs> Should we just have a look, see what happens, fire the old girl up? I wasn't expecting miracles, but uh, yeah, here we go. Well, yeah, you've seen it. <laughs> it worked absolutely perfectly, God knows. All part of the Ducati charm, I guess. You won't get that with a Japanese bike. But after letting everything cool down, I gave everything a good going over with my trusty ACF 50. The next job on the to-do list was getting the chain wax. As mentioned, it's been a couple of years since I've been out on the old girl and I've always trusted the Worth dry wax. It works really well and minimal fling, which I love because I hate the state of a rear wheel when it gets absolutely gunked up. 
So with the MOT book for two days time, there are a few things I like to make sure that happen. The bike is clean and obviously the basics like your lights, etc., work. So as I'd hoped, I thought this would be pretty straightforward. But not quite the case as unfortunately as you see here after a few attempts the rear brake light works which bulbs are okay wiring should be okay but the front i'm just getting nothing from and uh yeah typical chicate i guess it should go with the charm again of the electrics of a 90s old school bike but essentially there's a micro switch on the front master cylinder and when it's pulled it triggers the switch the good news is it looked like the two smallest screws on the bike could be undone and you could remove the micro switch and i managed to actually open it up and clean the contact well fantastic news a nice little fix and a no cost result the problem with these sort of things is you can wait days for it to arrive it can be 40 50 pound and as i've shown here sometimes it just needs a bit of tlc and you can get it working again Pleased to report, no other electrical gremlins regarding the lights. The fronts worked perfectly, so the next stage was checking the tyre pressures. Now the bike hadn't moved for two years. It had been on axle stands, which hopefully keeps the tyres in good order, but they were down to something like 15 or 20 psi. Well too low to go out riding on. I'd always recommend checking your tyres every ride. And this case, I went up to 33 psi, front and rear. There's various comments about what's best, but to be honest with you, I'm not a MotoGP rider. It works fine for me. Great news, as mentioned earlier, all the electrics are working fine, but that headlight still had that horrible cloudy look to it, and things like that can really date a bike or a car. Now normally, this is on plastic headlights, it goes on the surface, UV damages it, you wet sand it, polish it, and it brings it back. Now the Ducati headlights are glass, and the issue is actually from inside the glass. I don't know what causes it, but from when I did it years ago, you can get a little cloth and clean it up. The problem is the access hole is not very big. So essentially what I've done in the past, and I'm gonna do again this time, is use a cloth on a small screwdriver, and instead of using WD-40, which I've done in the past, I'm gonna try the trusty ACF-50. It seems to be harder wearing and longer lasting. So let's see three, four, five years down the line if this works better than the WD-40. I certainly hope so but it's not a big job to remove the nose cone gain access to the lights strip it all down give it a quick wipe over and you're done looking brand new factory fresh again So with the headlight looking fantastic again, I put it back in the bike, but I don't refit the nose cone. And the reason for this is I do wanna change the brake and clutch fluid. And with the nose cone out of the way, it just makes access a lot easier and it saves you risking any brake fluid falling on the paintwork, which can remove the paint. Definitely something we don't want on an original painted 748 SP. So I start work on the front brakes first and essentially using the trusty brake vacuum bleeder, I pull all the fluid out of the reservoir and pour new ATE Type 200 in. This replaced the ATE Racing Blue for those old school guys like me who used to use that back in the day, which sadly is no longer available. This is the next best thing. And I've got to be honest, for the cost of it, I've never had any brakes boil, I've never had brake failure. And for me, it's just worked perfectly in my situation. So really impressed with the stuff. Once the front brakes are done, I then move on to the clutch master cylinder. And as you can see from the reservoir pot, it doesn't look fantastic. It's long overdue a change. And you've got to be careful with the clutch systems because on hydraulic clutches on the motorcycles, you can have some that require mineral oil and some that require DOT4 brake fluid. And essentially, this one uses DOT4 brake fluid.
With the new fluid fitted in the clutch and brake system on the front, it's now time to do a quick lever check just to make sure that the clutch is disengaging and the pistons in the brake caliper are working. Good news is everything's in order and I move on to cleaning the caps. Now essentially I just degrease these using brake and clutch cleaner and then I cheat the screws to some ACF 50 just to make sure that corrosion doesn't come back which is pretty common on the 748 caps. With the reservoir caps refitted, that's the front complete. The problem is we need to come back to the rear caliper at a later date, as unfortunately my good friend Sand has completely cleared me out of brake fluid from his service previously. With all the jobs on the to-do list complete, it was time to put the old girl back together. And as I said before, it's one of the easiest bikes in the collection to work on. The fairings removed nicely, everything's really sturdy, and those Zeus fasteners make everything so quick and easy. But those clips are expensive, so do make sure, if you have one, that you get them screwed in properly. I think they're about seven pound a clip, which is pretty dear for one. But essentially, everything, like I mentioned, goes to plan. And with the fairings complete, I need to make sure that the bench is clean. Because as I've been spraying ACF 50 everywhere, I certainly didn't want to be wheeling the bike back through that because it could be very slippery on the tires for that first road test in over two years. Stone Automotive have teamed up with B-Moto. If you're looking for your next policy, why not give them a try? And if you do end up buying a policy through my affiliate link in the description, you'll also be supporting the channel. Thanks guys. Don't do this to me now. <sighs> really? <sighs> Typical. This is why you do not own an old bike. That's great when you're tinkering. It's fucking rubbish when it's boiling hot. Fucking work. <sighs> All right, let's have a little five minute breather. Well, if you can hear me, I gave the cables a quick wiggle and uh, yeah, <laughs> it came into life. Ah, good old Chicati. Oh my god, it's just as uncomfortable as I remember. <laughs> breathe in. Oh, it does feel cool. It's very cool to be back. <laughs> Wrists are already hurting, we're like <laughs> two minutes in. Oh, what a thing, what a thing. Let's hope we um, go and meet Mr. Spence and uh, yeah, hopefully it's a little bit more quieter out on some back roads to uh, the Ducatis ain't built for town riding, especially the sports bikes, but I well, remember the speedos in kilometers an hour as well. Let's get some heat and everything and then uh, we'll open her up, shall we? So mechanical. It was so old school. I love it. Need a little bit more heat and everything yet. Yeah, still a bit cold, bless her. Oh man, such a cool bike. Such a cool. It just feels. I mean, it's, as I mentioned, terribly uncomfortable, but it feels super special. Just the noises it makes, the rattles. Ah, oh, 
full of character. Just lift the visor up and then do some filtering. So we're obviously out in the new Next Helmet today as well. First uh, proper run out in the UK as we had the old girl shipped over from Portugal. And so I had a little bit too much luggage allowance to be able to, uh, unfortunately, oh my God, a crap bit of tarmac. Um, a little bit too much luggage allowance. We've got a little uh, Grand Theft Auto jump there as well. Let's um, switch over to the rev counter, shall we? thing handling I mean tires are still a bit cold but it is like 18 degrees out now so we've got some sunshine I think the tires are dated 2015 <laughs> a little bit old but yeah loving the uh, the wide vision on the new lid I must say in this summer's day I'll keep the visor shut I normally like the visor open but you guys won't be able to hear anything. New setup as well with a couple of uh, DJI cameras, got the new drone, so yeah, enough of me waffling. Let's, um, let's go and see Spence and get out on some better roads. So while we're stuck in even more traffic, I mean, I have chosen to come out literally at five o'clock in the afternoon on a weekday. The old girl's got an MOT on her. So yeah, that was done off camera because I was running late from work and um, yeah, obviously past flying colors. She actually started that day. It is hot and oh, like all old. Right, don't want to find neutral as long as you got first gear, I guess. Oosh. Yeah, it didn't start when I get left the house. I did. Just fucking was shaking all the cables and in, in through the ferry and then it just went. I was like, oh dear. Oh. So I didn't want to switch it off at yours just in case. <laughs> <laughs> it was like typical Ducati. What was it? Those cables everywhere. Just start a solenoid, give me bloody anything. But we're here. It was a fantastic trip down memory lane getting the old 748 back out again and stuffing my face with some chips in good weather. Obviously, we've got some more bits to do on the 748 and try and diagnose that starting issue. So until next time, thanks for watching.